Hi everybody, before we get started on this video, I just want to put out there um, a warning or a heads up that if you follow this channel, you know that I know what I'm doing, but this video I feel like is a little rough because I had a hard time making decisions. You know, sometimes I get stuck in my head where I'm going, I want it to work out like this, but I don't have the, the tools or the supplies to... Um, make that happen. So I have to make a decision that I really don't want to make or choose between two options that are less than what I wanted. So um, the video does turn out in the end. My neighbor is very happy with the outcome and I just wish I would have had all the supplies I needed to get it done correctly, which means the way I wanted it done. So I hope you guys like this video. Thanks. Bye. Hi everybody. It has been such a long time since I've done a video. Christmas had me really busy. And then I've been doing some custom work for my aunts for children's wear. So yeah, it's just really busy. So, and I have been getting your requests and I do have them on my list. So I'll be working on those, but this is, um, an immediate job that I need to get done. And I'm just going to bring you along in case you have the same problem. So this is a hole in a patch pocket for my neighbor. And he asked me to fix it. When he goes judging his dog competitions or whatever they are, he says that he ripped this hole by putting his gun in his pocket. And I guess it tears up right here. So my thing and the way that my mind works is I like to make something look as much like it originally did when the garment was made. So I was kind of going back and forth on how I could do this. So the first thing I, I understood is that I'm not getting this underneath my sewing machine because if I just stitch it, it closes off the pocket and he needs the pocket. So my next option is to take out the top stitching here and then I can repair the pocket. Now what I, now the thing I was worried about that I was worried about and he's not worried about thankfully because I'm going to have to do that is that if I stitch it back on it stitches all the way through. It doesn't affect anything other than I didn't like the way it looked but he goes no no no, no do that. So I'm going to take these out and I'm going to repair this patch now or this hole. I was thinking of just using uh, a patch that has an adhesive on it, iron it on, stitch around it. But that then that leaves the underside still like this, which his gun can still um, uh, tear up or get caught up on because there's some you know stuff there. Then I thought I'll patch it from the underside and then with thread that matches the jacket, I can just kind of do the stitching over and that that would be okay and then I thought maybe I if I make a patch two identical patches I'll measure this out make the patch trace it make two patches put one underneath one on top but then I don't have fabric to match this so I'm thinking I might do the patch on the underside and just do the stitching up here I'll clean this up and then I will stitch it on top. So that's what I think I'm going to do. But between now and then, I might change my mind. And this is what makes me doing alterations very difficult because I just don't really don't know what I'm doing until I get there because I don't have the fabric to match this. Um, he has another jacket that's similar, but it's really tore up. So I'm questioning the strength of the fabric. And in which case, you don't put delicate fabric on a pack as a patch. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to get started on getting these seams ripped out and then let's see where, <laughs> where it goes from there.
Okay. <clears throat> Sitting here ripping out these seams, I'm thinking about my uh, my stash and what I have in it and what I could use. And I don't have any stitch witchery, which is what I would normally do. I would normally cut out a patch, cut out the same size on the stitch witchery, iron it on, peel it back, iron it on the garment, and then stitch around it. But I don't have that. So I'll show you what I have. And I'm thinking it might be a really good patch. Hang on. I have some hide. I don't know or whatever this leather is. This was given to me years ago and I just hang on to it. So the only thing I don't know is how well the gun will slide against this. I know that when I sew with leather on my metal presser foot that um, it grabs it. So I might just take this over there to him and see how that would work. Only because this guy wears his stuff to death. And my, my thinking is to make it um, a little more durable and to solve the problem of his gun tearing through the fabric again. So I might have to do that. We'll see. I'm thinking if I have this on the underside and I'm sewing it like this, then the presser feet is what is going to move that leather along instead of the um, presser foot on top. Then I can stitch at the very edge of the leather so that when his gun goes in, it doesn't, it doesn't grab it. <clears throat> but then I also thought, what if I could take it all the way up to the top, but I don't think I'm going to be able to get the, all that underneath the presser foot unless I let this out. And I just didn't want to have to mess with the pocket, even though I don't think it's sewn together. And I think, yeah, these edges are super close. So even if I had to, it wouldn't affect the use of the inside pocket. So um, I was thinking about just taking it up here all the way down and just reinforcing that whole area that the gun would be going into. So I'll think about it. Okay, so I am going to make the pattern for this. I just noticed you guys, and maybe you didn't notice, but I looked down and my fingernails are dirty. <laughs> and I was kind of embarrassed, but I was out collecting wood earlier. Um, I'm on a quest to learn how to build a really nice fire for my wood stove. And I've been doing a lot of it. And I'm making progress, so I'm happy about that. Okay, so I'm making a pattern to know how to make this. Um, patch and this is just how I'm doing it I know some people will just say you know do a rectangle but can't get away from what's in your brain whatever And why'd I fold it? Because I am going to place that fold right here on my pocket. And I know <clears throat> that I will need to make it about an eighth of an inch smaller, but I can also do it from up here. I'm just going to trim a little off each side because I would really like to catch it in 
the inside seam, but not the outside seam. I'm gonna cut this one directly on the line. So when I put the, the patch in, I might make it a little more narrow also. So if I do it like this, this is gonna have to come down a little bit. So what I want to do is reinforce this whole area where the gun will be going in and hopefully it will protect the canvas. <clears throat> Now, if I want to, and I think I want to, I'm going to make it a little more narrow. Okay, what I'm going to do is make one patch out of leather. I will slide it under here. I will catch the leather in this inner seam and I will catch the leather here as well. See if I can pull this up just a little bit. There. And then I'll catch the leather here. So I do not have stitch witchery in the sheet, but I do have it in a roll, and I have a pressing cloth that is plastic or some sort of plastic that doesn't ever melt. It's amazing. So let's get this patch made. I hope I'm not making a mistake by doing it out of leather and then causing more friction with the gun on leather, but we'll see. So this right here is a little more thick. This here is thin and I'm thinking of doing it here because I don't want to make the pocket too thick. And I hope I'm not making a mistake. <laughs> and just in case you're wondering, um, yes, a basic sewing machine will go through thin leather like this. You will need a Teflon foot so that it glides over the leather. But as far as strength goes, a basic sewing machine will go through a thin leather like this. I don't know how thin it is, but you can see right there. After I get these um, custom baby clothes from my aunt and my uncle, my aunt and my uncle, um, if you guys would like to see what I have in my shop, I will leave a link in the description box. You know what would also work with this? If I don't have stitch witchery, I have um, a leather glue. And 
I can place this on with a leather glue, let it dry, and then stitch over it. So I will see if I, if I can find that. I think that gold uh, bottle that's called tacky glue, I think that will work. Okay, I did not find my glue, but I have this and I've used, this is what I use um, when I put zippers in. I will put it on the zipper tape, press it to my garment so it'll hold it still while I um, sew it on. So this is kind of like the stitch witchery, except you don't need to iron it. And like I said, oh man, I got it on my finger. <laughs> you can see what it looks like. So just don't hold on to it too long. It'll stick to your fingers. Yikes. Okay, sorry about that. You can see it works really good. And I will link whatever I use in the description box so you guys can um, get it for yourself if you're interested. Give it a good press, make sure it's really stuck to the leather or the fabric, whatever you're using. And just pull the paper off. I don't remember what it's called right now, um, but I will link it in the description box and I'll, I'll let you know then. Or when I find out, I'll do, I'll put the text somewhere on the screen. My fingers are sticking. This is nice because um, you really shouldn't put pins in leather, especially if it's going to be seen. This won't. And it's not on an edge where you can use these clips that I got for Christmas. So this is, this is the next be best option. So it's going in like this. Now, if you're wondering, does this gum up your machine? I have never had that problem. Once it's on the needle, we'll go through it without a problem. Okay. <gasps> Yay! Now you can see where it's at. I just want to reinforce this whole area. No ironing needed. I might put a little pin here just to hold this in place while I move it around just on the outside edge. Oh my gosh, this this canvas is so thick. Okay, 
Um, actually, I don't need to do that right now. I need to, I can feel the edge here. I am going to use my chalk. This is the kind that will um, disappear when you iron it. So I'm going to line this right here because I can feel the leather inside. Okay, now I'll stitch down the sides up here to make sure this stays on and then I will come down here and that will stitch on the lower edge. Then I can take this and do the stitching across the top. But wondering if I should trim all those off or let them just lay over like that. Not sure yet. Because if I cut it all off, you'll see the leather underneath. So we will see. I'm not sure yet. All right, I made the decision to take this off. I feel like it will be easier to sew it back on than to struggle around this one seam that is still attached to the jacket. And I believe I have enough top stitching thread to cover all of this. If you guys can hear that noise that is my wood stove that is really heating up just hope it doesn't explode <laughs> do not need that problem right now All right, oh my gosh, that's gonna be so much easier. All right, let me get my machine up here and we'll get this thing sewn on. Okay, you guys, I changed my mind again. I am, there's just not going to be a way for me to make this look um, like it didn't have uh, this big hole in it. So I'm gonna go with what I feel like would be um, durable and long lasting this guy doesn't care if i put a red patch on it it's all just me dealing with my own mindset and my crazy when it comes to mending so i cleaned this up and what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this stuff here i'm going to put it on the inside on the leather just somewhere near the edge. Okay, well that didn't really work out. Okay, I just scooched it over. I'm going to press it down so it'll stay. I'm going to attempt to do it. Okay. Um, my phone ran out of storage or whatever and I had to unload it. Um, I hate this because I really want to do it a certain way but I don't have everything I need to do it. So, And I really didn't like this dark area but I didn't like the threads hanging out either. So I put the adhesive under here and then I'm just going to stitch around it so that this doesn't come up. I think I might be doing a three-step zigzag around here. Um, yeah, it, this is where I'm conflicted because um, that part of me that wants to do it a certain way and I can't because I don't have everything I need. So I'm going to do, I guess, the second best option. 
So I got the adhesive down. I am going to use D, which is my triple zigzag. And I don't want it too far apart. So we'll see how that how this works. Okay, so let's turn it. I think I want to make it a little closer. I think I'm just going to make myself feel better knowing that I put a durable material behind it, you know, the leather, and just be done with it. Okay, now I'm going to do the long edges and I'm going to stitch just inside of the chalk marks. I took it to the inside uh, top stitching line. So that when I um, do the top stitching, it'll just intersect that line. Now I will do the other side. is a big bulky jacket. Okay, I'm going to start on the inside between those two top stitching lines. to follow along this line, the one that's already there. Okay, you guys, this would be so much faster if I could make a decision faster because the patch is, is sewn in. <laughs> My problem is making decisions and not trying to make everything a certain way. Now I am going to stitch the pocket back on. Now this doesn't look like top stitching thread. It looks very similar to what I just put on. Let me look at this. This is my top stitching. I'm going to put the top stitching thread on. I think it'll work better. 
and look better. Okay, I changed my thread to my top stitching and now I'm sewing the pocket back on. Let's hope this works, guys. I am going to need to buy me another um, industrial sewing machine, so we'll be saving for that. I don't know if you can see this right now, but my stitches are really, really small, so I'm lengthening them a little bit. Just so it looks more like top stitching instead of, I don't even know what it looks like because it's super tiny. Okay, so I had a little problem um, taking off from that last corner and having the la the back of my presser foot up because when it sorry when it leans like this it it it's hard for the needle and the thread to like move forward. So if you lift the back of the presser foot, then it keeps the presser foot level, and it just makes it a little easier. And then as you move, it'll slide off and then your whole presser foot is on the same level. I think I need a new needle in here. I'm starting to hear sounds that don't sound good. <laughs> I'm trying not to have to um, take my needle out and restart. I'm just gonna turn around. Sorry guys, my camera's all over the place. <clears throat>
this is going to be tough because my little machine is little. It's going to be hard to get all that jacket in there. This is why I need an industrial machine. You notice that when I move my jacket, the jacket, my whole sewing machine moves because it's so light. Now the true test is what it's going to look like on the inside and hopefully I don't have to do any redos. Well I went into his pocket right here a little bit but I don't think it's a problem. I don't think he uses that pocket. It doesn't, it doesn't look like it's ever been used we'll see how that goes anyway other than that i think it's a good successful patch um let me know what you guys think if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed to this channel go ahead and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video thanks bye